If your legs feel heavy when you walk, it might not just be aging. Spinal stenosis can steal your freedom. Here's how you can take it back. Spinal stenosis is a really common condition that we see. It's one of those things that takes many years to develop, but what does really spinal stenosis mean? That's kind of what patients ask me all the time. Just understand that stenosis, the word stenosis means narrowing of a hole. Now in the spine, we have three primary holes that we talk about. We have the central canal, basically where the central nervous system is. So it starts at the brain, it goes into the spinal cord and it travels all the way down. When we hit the lumbar spine, it turns into a bundle of nerves. That central canal is one of the holes and then we have two holes on either side. And the two holes on either side are where the nerves exit and they go to various parts of our body. Now, in a normal healthy spine, those holes are wide and what we call patent or open. And essentially the neurology can exist there without irritation or without compression, I should say. Um, but as the degenerative process or the arthritic process kind of sets in in the spine, what happens is we get thinning of the discs we get hypertrophy or growth in what are called the facet joints, which are on the backside, and we get growth or hypertrophy of the ligaments on the backside. And what that does is it closes down the holes where the nerves occupy. We have multiple things that are kind of affecting what we call the stenosis of those holes. One is thinning of the disc, so there's less space between the vertebral bodies. We get narrowing of the intervertebral foramen, the holes on the side, as a result of what's called facet arthritis and ligamentum flavum hypertrophy, right? So that closes down all these holes. And when, when I say stenosis or narrowing of a hole, one of the most common uh, things that people typically know about is like aortic stenosis. So the aorta or the big blood vessel uh, that's part of the cardiovascular system can become stenotic as a result of calcifications. Think of it in those terms. Think of it like a pipe that carries water. When the pipe gets smaller, there's less water that can flow through. When we talk about spinal stenosis and the symptomatology that occurs with that, yes, we have local low back pain, but we also get weakness in the legs. We can get numbness in the legs and feet as well. And in many cases, for those particular patients, it feels better to kind of sit as opposed to stand, standing and walking, which really cause an increase in symptoms, especially in leg problems, but also in low back pain as well. It causes a lot of irritation to the facet joints when we stand and walk, and that increases the pain. So a lot of those patients can only walk short distances, and that's not just related to the fact that they have weakness in their leg, but it's also related to the fact that they develop lots of low back pain when they start to walk. A lot of the elderly people you see at the supermarket leaning on the carts, the reason they do that is because when you're in a flex position, it takes pressure off of the facet joints on the backside, or the, what we call the posterior compartment, and it also opens up the holes so that the neurology can kind of exist in a larger space. And it feels good to do that. It feels good to be in a flex position. At the end stage of that condition is when we really start to see the weakness in the legs develop. And that's typically closer to the end stage when things have become damaged for a long enough period of time that those holes get smaller and smaller. In an ideal world, you wanna get there before that happens so that you can stabilize the spine and improve it and prevent it from getting to that point. So we always wanna err on the side of prevention when it comes to our health. And in the beginning stages of chronic low back pain, you know, we develop a low back issue. Maybe it's not real consistent. Maybe it doesn't happen all the time, but it starts to become more and more of a problem over time. That's an indication that there's lots of dysfunction, right? So just in general terms, you know, we should, we should always be thinking about preventing or, you know, keeping the spine as healthy as we possibly can, right? So don't sit for prolonged periods. And unfortunately, some people sit at their jobs, so you have to really do the things that are necessary to offset the amount of time that you spend sitting, but sitting to your spine is like sugar to your teeth, right? Um, so we always wanna be cognizant before things ever develop, but once they do start to develop, and if we enter a doctor's office and we've had chronic back pain for long periods of time, and we have signs now of an arthritic condition where we have some degenerative disc disease, we have some facet arthropathy, we're showing signs on film that essentially our, our tissue is breaking down, the structural tissues of our spine are breaking down, you know, before it ever becomes actual stenosis, because that's the end stage of the process. When we say stenosis, it takes a lot to really narrow those holes and it takes many years for that to happen. Now, there are acute situations where we can develop stenosis, but we're really talking about the chronic 
portion. But essentially, we want to be cognizant of the fact that if it shows up on film, if it shows up on x-ray or even MRI, then it's something that we really need to pay attention to. And when you're working in a regenerative model, it's not always just about solving for pain in that particular circumstance and getting the patient to a comfortable point, but it's also about preventing the condition from getting worse over time. It just depends on the tools and resources that you use whether or not you can actually prevent the end stage. That's the key, right? So in the traditional model, if you're just going in for epidural steroid injections, taking oral medication, and you know eating a really crappy diet, the chances that you'll develop the end stage of the disease are probably really high, right? Because what we know about cortisone and those types of approaches is that really they're just symptom-based and they come with some downside in the sense that they damage and weaken tissue and accelerate the degenerative process. So I would urge, you know, anybody who has a chronic low back problem, when it doesn't have to be as a result of an accident, sometimes these things come on really gradually over time as a result, just just living our lives, 80% of the population is going to develop back pain at some point. So what I would do is urge individuals to work in a paradigm that has the capacity to to heal, restore structural integrity, and prevent the end stage of the disease. Because once you get to the end stage, it's really difficult to overcome. You may be experiencing symptoms like this or any other pain. I urge you to just consume some of our resources. Visit our YouTube page, download some of our blogs and articles. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comment below or reach out to us.